bump. Hey guys, it's Jeff Ware here from bikereview.com.au and today I'm out testing the Harley Davidson Breakout 114. It's a fantastic motorcycle. I've been firing it around for about a week now. Um, I had ridden the previous model uh, with the smaller engine, um, but the optional big 114 is standard now for 2020. So I've been out riding around on this 2020 model and uh, it's a fantastic bike. Trying to do the videos the best I can during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Fortunately, you know, I'm a full-time motorcycle journalist and I'm allowed to ride. Please pull me over, I'll just show them my business card. I managed to get Heather to come out to do photo shoots and a bit of video footage, but because we've got the four kids in tow with us, it makes things hard. So I'm just trying to do the best I can on my own. So, just on my way back to Harley Davidson with the Harley Davidson Breakout 114. I've been riding this awesome machine for uh, just over a week. And uh, one word that really sums up this bike, uh, it would be fun. absolute laugh once you get over the weight of it and the really heavy steering at low speed uh, which can cause a few dramas if you're not experienced you know u-turns and through traffic and things like that just with those huge heavy handlebars heavy triple clamps heavy front wheel and lazy steering rake it tends to want to flop side to side even i've nearly dropped it a couple of times nearly dropped it right down look the pipe i think touched maybe or maybe that's been touching the road i'm not sure but the pegs have um, so I'll tell you about this bike. It's got that cranking Milwaukee 8114 in it. Now that engine is absolutely awesome. You know, it's not V-Rod power or acceleration, but it's very close and it's revs. I love riding it between 3000 and about 5,200 RPM. You've got a rev limiter just after 5.3 that it hits pretty hard. But if you ride it between four and five or five two, it's so much fun it really it stretches your arms out it's got that much torque and power and acceleration but if you don't want to do that you can run it around below two grand in higher gears 
roll that throttle on, it'll pull sweetly. Mid range is nice and sweet between two and three grand. Um, and then, like I said, that fun area, three to five, two. Uh, and yeah, hang on. You got that big fat back tire there for grip, uh, which really hooks up. I haven't had any wheel spin or slides or anything like you get on some of the big, more powerful Japanese bikes. Uh, it's quite soft when it gets a bit of temperature in it. Um, but like, looks like it is a little bit melting a little bit today up here, but it's a warmer day today. Paint finish, fantastic, just unbelievable. Beautiful quality everywhere, of course, as you would expect from Harley Davidson. Small pillion seat, my wife jumped on that. She said it's all right for really short trips, that's about it. And the seat here, uh, I'm finding it comfortable for up to about an hour and a half. After that, I'll get a sore tailbone, which I do on cruises anyway. Uh, I've cranked up the rear preload and I'm going to go up a bit harder again now to four. Um, so I'm 95 kilos and I just find it was bottoming out. Steers a lot better with a bit of preload on it. But just be careful that you don't burn your knuckles on the pipe when you do that. But that's a nice feature. The rear brake is absolutely fantastic. In fact, this bike stops. If you jam both brakes on, this thing stops incredibly well incredibly well you just got to pull them on really hard and it stops front and rear suspension is firm well supported on the spring and the damping a little bit too firm on the high speed compression both ends so that means you get that nice support through corners and around town on the smooth stuff but over sharper bumps you do get a big jolt and if i owned one of these i'd be working on some valving changes to make it a little bit more of a compromise so it was a bit more comfortable over the sharper bumps on the country roads especially with that low seat thin seat and that seating position and it just make life a little bit more comfortable the clutch is fabulous take up is only about half a centimeter off the grip it's really smooth and uh it's a fabulous clutch it's reasonably light for a big harley like i said the brakes are great the front brakes are really good if you squeeze them hard enough they don't have a lot of feel and they do fade a bit if you rely on them on their own. However, if you use both brakes together, you have a fabulous stopping package. You can really rely on it. The front tyre profile helps the bike steer really well. It's got plenty of grip and feel from that front tyre, but it could do with a set of more modern, uh, more sporty and triangular profile or sectioned tyres, maybe like those cruise techs or something. I have ridden a brake out on cruise techs and it handled incredibly well. Foot peg position, brilliant, very comfortable. I'm 187 centimetres tall. They do touch down, of course, as you would expect. If you shortened them or raised them a little bit, it wouldn't hurt the riding position. You'd get a little bit more ground clearance, but whatever you want. Gear shift, nice gearbox. It's been getting better on this one as I've put Ks on it. Nice smooth shift with or without the clutch. Prefers the clutch. Up, down, obviously, you've got to use the clutch. But yeah, I'm really impressed with that gearbox. Top gear is a big tall overdrive. Top gear you're sitting on around 2,000 RPM at 120 k's an hour on the freeway, which is really quite comfortable. Switch gear, standard Harley, fair, both sides of the dash. A little bit hard to read this dash. That's the only thing I don't like about it, is that's so dark in there. I wish I could turn it up, make it a bit brighter. I've been running it mainly showing RPM. But using the button here, you can scroll through and you can have RPM, you can have an Odo, Trip A, Trip B, uh, remaining range, a clock, um, and back to RPM, and then your fuel gauge is here, depending on where you ride, and then your idiot lights are all here. Normal fuel cap, conventional master cylinder, and then your hazards and everything, which I keep putting the hazards on accidentally, constantly. Pillion pegs, fold up. Huge, nice rubber, good quality pillion pegs, of course. Plenty of chrome, great finish. So yeah, I mean, I love the engine. The mapping's really good. This engine's fa fabulous. Like I said, it pulls from zero to two grand just so smoothly. Two to three is that nice mid-range, and then three to five, early fives is just woohoo kind of spot. So the riding position, the bars are quite wide. Um, look, I don't get any wind buffeting on my head. I wear a full face fel helmet, by the way. Um, I don't wear an open face on these type of cruises because I just get too much wind in my face. Just needs a set of pipes and a bit more noise. 
and uh, it'll be spot on. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Have a fantastic day. Tell us about your Harley Davidson experiences. Let us know what you think of the Breakout 114 and take it easy. See you later.